many of you are ready for the spring conference? I am looking forward to the spring conference. It will be my first conference since I've been a member of Toastmasters. How many of you are looking forward to competing? Hopefully I'll get my chance sometime to compete. I'm looking forward to that as well. Many of us speak at our Toastmasters clubs or we speak at other Toastmaster clubs to gain our confidence and build our speech giving ability. But when you think about speaking and competing at the same time at a higher level, it can be both exciting and scary at the same time. Some of you may wonder, how do I go about writing a speech that can possibly win me an award at one of these conferences? Well, I want to remind you that you already have some of the valuable tools in front of you. When you first join Toastmasters, or sometimes towards the beginning of your tenure with Toastmasters, you receive the new members packet. Now, in that new members packet should have been these three manuals. You have your competent communicator, communication manual. You have your gestures, your body speaks manual. And you also have your speaking voice. This is a good starting point to start writing your manuals, start writing your speeches. When I first started Toastmasters, I was assigned a mentor. Many of you know my mentor as Angel Guerrero. Angel taught me the yellow sticky method. I took that method and I used it and stick my own twist, my own twist to it. Basically what it is, is you'll take a few topics of interest and you'll write them on stickies, four, five, or six, and you'll put them at the top of the board. I have a board at home on my wall, but it's a little bit bigger than this. I couldn't take it off the wall. And you write your main topic on the top stickies. For each main topic, you'll take a subtopic and add to each one. After you've done that, you'll take just say three points or three facts and add to each of the topics. And the reason why I use the number three is if you have a vivid and wild imagination, you can go on all day adding points to each of these topics. So stick with three, and that'll help you. Now once you do that, you kind of look at your board on your wall here and you say, hmm, which of these topics am I interested in, or what do I think will interest others? And you'll pick that topic. What I do is just take it, this will use this one for sake of time, take it off the board, and I'll put it on a notebook in front of my computer. I will research the topic if I don't already know about the topic, if I need to know more information about the topic. And from there, I'll form an outline. It's very important that you create an uh, outline for your speech because it'll help you be organized. It'll help your speech be organized. And it'll keep you on track. Now, in your Second project of your competent communications manual, your second project states there is three parts to your speech. There's your opening, your opening, your body, and your conclusion. These will help you complete your speech if you follow that particular outline. As far as your opening goes, you want to get an attention grabber, something that will grab your audience's attention and possibly put them on the edge of their seat. If in doubt on what to start with, always use humor or some type of deep drama. That'll draw the audience in. Once you start on your body, now you've got their attention, you have to keep it. As you're giving your points, your sub points, and showing your related material, try to be relative. So for example, if your speech is about being in the hospital, you might want to add some humor or something that happened to you, such as you were walking down the hall in the hospital with your hospital gown. You felt a breeze and realized you were playing peekaboo with staff. <laughs> People can relate to that. It's happened to a lot of us. Also using something of this nature that's relative and also humorous, it'll keep the attention of the people that are listening to your speech and if you've lost anyone at that point, humor such as that or something relative will draw 
the ones that you've lost back into your speech and get you back on track and get them back on track as well. One thing to remember when giving your speech and allow this allow time for this when you're writing your speech, which is why it's important to try to practice your speech before you give it is you want to try to use gestures. Gestures. I get that word wrong all the time. <laughs> gestures. Not nervous gestures. If you're using nervous gestures that can be distracting to your audience and they'll it'll take away from your speech. It's good to move around. I have to work on it a lot like my mentor tells me to. But you don't want to pace back and forth because that can also be distracting to your audience. But use your hand gestures. If you get lost, put your hand back to your side and then go back to what you were doing. But the nervous gestures will throw them off. The other thing to remember to use is your voice. When giving a speech, you don't want to talk too loud. You don't want to talk too low. You don't want to talk too fast. This will also distract your audience and cause, to, cause you to lose them. In your conclusion, you will summarize what you just said to your audience. You will also use a strong closing statement, something that they will remember that will catch them and leave them walking away knowing what you, remembering what you spoke about. Also, This, all, all of this information can be found in the free manual that I've shown you here that I came in the new packet. In closing, if you utilize the tools that Toastmasters has given you, which come with your membership, which are in your manuals, which is, which is in, in your clubs on toastmasters.org, you can write a, an award-winning speech. I look forward to competing and seeing you, some of you in competition. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the spring in Cary, March 13th through the 15th.